Hopefully you've been doing some soil testing on your farm this fall, and when you're looking at the analysis, if you're looking at parts per million, you may have noticed that the largest number on the whole test was calcium. Think about it this way. It's the number four nutrient, right behind nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. The next one that your crop needs the most pounds of is calcium. And there are a lot of things about calcium that go into its role in the soil profile and in the plant. But just keep in mind, calcium is a very important nutrient. That's why we're talking about it today. Let's start by talking about calcium in the soil. I first want you to think about this. Okay, if I've got calcium and I've got magnesium out there, I want to have a lot more calcium than magnesium. And the main reason why is calcium is a much larger molecule. And so the example I always give is, let's say that I filled an entire room that you're sitting in with basketballs. Would you be able to breathe? Well, of course you would, because there's plenty of pore space, space for air to get through all those basketballs. Well, if I filled that room, that same room, floor to ceiling with sand, would you be able to breathe? No, you wouldn't because the molecule size is so much smaller and the air wouldn't be able to get through that pore space. It's the same kind of thing going on in your soil. The calcium molecule is so much bigger than the magnesium molecule, you want to have a fair amount of calcium in your soil. That's why we always talk about it in our base saturation test, you want to see 65 to 80 percent calcium. In other words, you want a lot more calcium than anything else in the base saturation test, especially magnesium. If you have lots of magnesium, for example, lots of that small molecule, that tells us that you probably have a poorly drained tight soil there's just not oxygen getting down through that soil because the molecule size is so small when we're thinking about calcium a lot of times if i bring up calcium talking to a farmer he's like oh are you talking about lime well yes calcium is certainly one of the components of lime when we think about lime it's calcium carbonate and one of the big things that we're doing putting lime out there is getting more free calcium out in our soils now the other way that we think about calcium a lot is in gypsum that's calcium sulfate and Sulfur is certainly another important secondary nutrient. And I know I talk to a lot of farmers all the time that are like, how can I get sulfur out there cheaper and what forms are available? Gypsum is one of those farms that's a pretty good way to get sulfur out there and also build calcium levels in your soil. The important thing is, like Brian was talking about with base saturation, when we are low in calcium, we have to do something about that. It's very important. And if you're just thinking, well, I'll just add more N, P, and K, and I'll work around this pH issue or this low calcium issue, you can't do it that way. You have to get your balance right on calcium. And so when you get a base saturation that's down below 60 or, or even 65, that's when we really need to start focusing on those things like gypsum and lime and adding more calcium into that equation to improve crop production. If you do have a fair amount of calcium in your soil, that's going to mean that you're going to have more oxygen going down in the soil. So theoretically, you should have better root growth, you should have better microbial activity, you should have better availability of many nutrients in the soil. So all these things kind of tie together. And I realize when you look at the soil test, you're maybe just focused on NP and K, but what we're trying to tell you today is take a real hard look at that calcium, especially in the base saturation test. Base saturation just gives you a ratio of calcium to several other nutrients. And again, we want to see that ratio, that percentage, to be 65 to 80 percent calcium. Those would be pretty good levels if I'm somewhere in that range. Well, those five nutrients are going to add up to 100 percent in base saturation. So let's just say that you're drastically low in calcium. Let's just say that it's 50 percent there has to be the other 50% in those other four nutrients. So you could be very high in sodium, it could be very high in magnesium. You just don't or know what it's going to be. Or hydrogen or potassium. Yeah, it could be hydrogen, for example. And so when you have those others that are high, uh, you say, well, wait a minute now, I'm high in these others, so I've got this problem too. Most of your problem is you're low in calcium. And as you build up more calcium in the soil, you're going to fix some of those other issues. Like hydrogen, for example, is only high because you have an acidic soil. So you have a very low pH soil. And what do you do in that case to fix it? Well, you add lime. You're putting more free calcium out there and you're tying up that hydrogen and all of a sudden your hydrogen percent goes down, your calcium goes up. Brian talked about magnesium being an issue, being such a small molecule. And a lot of times we end up with very tight, poorly drained soils. When we add more calcium to the equation, especially in a combination like calcium sulfate or gypsum. Now we're putting that out in the soil and if you have lots of magnesium, the magnesium has a stronger bond or affinity for that sulfate molecule than what the calcium does. And you end up with the magnesium displacing the calcium and I realize I'm getting into a little bit of chemistry here. But when you have calcium sulfate and you add magnesium to the equation, it all of a sudden becomes magnesium sulfate and you've got free calcium in your soil and magnesium sulfate is Epsom salt that can flush out of the soil. So you can fix things over time. We've got some of the soil that's lower in calcium than we'd like, higher in magnesium that we'd like, and this is exactly what we're doing, trying to flush some of that magnesium out over time 
and build up more calcium in our soil. Well, calcium is very important in the soil. It's also very important in the plant. There are a number of different things that go on in each and every plant that calcium is absolutely essential for. So make sure you have good levels of calcium in your soil and that those calcium molecules do get into your plant during the season if you want top yield. Well, top yields and healthy plants are very important, especially if you want to control our weed of the week. We'll show you how coming up next.